Next, benefit sanctions have increased in severity in recent years and can have serious consequences. That's according to a group of MPs who say those who see their benefit reduced or stopped altogether for missing, for example, a job centre appointment, often face an appalling situation, leading them into, quote, debt, rent arrears and sometimes homelessness. More than a million people who claim unemployment benefits are expected to meet certain conditions in order to get those payments, such as showing they're looking for work. Around 400,000 sanctions were imposed in 2015. Let's speak now to Jill Thompson. Her brother, a former soldier, died weeks after his benefits were stopped. He'd missed two appointments with the government's work programme. Charlotte Hughes's daughter was sanctioned when she was 23 weeks pregnant. And Bob Blackman is here, Conservative MP for Harrow. He supports the work the government is doing to encourage people back into employment. Welcome, all of you. Um, Jill, your brother was on Job Seekers Allowance. He missed those two meetings. What was his sanction? He was sanctioned um, totally. He lost all, all the money. He was, he was left penniless. Um, he was an insulin-dependent diabetic, and the DWP were aware of this. So he was left destitute. So he had no, he no had money? No money, no food. Um, he, he couldn't chill his insulin, and he died with no food in his stomach. Right. Um, obviously, we invited a member of the DWP to come on the programme. They gave us a statement saying, our sympathies are with your family. Decisions on sanctions aren't taken lightly. There is a chain of processes we follow before a sanction comes into effect, including taking every opportunity to contact the claimant several times. People can also appeal if they disagree. Your brother did not appeal or ask for a reconsideration of the sanction or apply for a hardship payment. David wouldn't have been eligible for a hardship payment. Um, we, you know, it's been looked into. Um, we've looked at all the um, paperwork and he, he probably wouldn't have been eligible for a hardship payment. Mm. David was a very quiet and private person. He never moaned. He, he wouldn't have complained. Plus, as well, um, a letter was received on the 15th saying that David was going to be sanctioned. Mm. David was found dead on the 20th. Do you say there is a link between those two things? David died with no food in his stomach. He died in the middle of a benefit sanction. Um, and diabetes is a serious condition where you need food and insulin. He was sanctioned till the 9th of August. Um, I feel that they should have, um, before sanctioning him, looked, at, um, looked into his medical condition more mm -hmm. and taken advice because it is not a, you know, it is a serious condition. Mm -hmm. And um, I do feel that um, sanctioned him. When they sanctioned him, they put him at risk. Bob Blackman, as a Conservative MP, um, the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee who produced this report today, uh, Labour MP Meg Hillier, says sanctions are a blunt instrument that this government has been using. Do you agree? Well, I think we, we should recognise that the level of employment now is at a record level. The numbers of people that are disabled, women, young people in, re in work are now uh, at an all-time high. Uh, what we were elected to do was to make sure that work always pays and people should be encouraged to work. So I, mean, I start from that point of view. However, and when we come on to situations like this... Individuals. The, individuals. Real what, people. Real, what should happen is clearly sanctions should only be applied uh, in the most extreme circumstances. This seems to me a case, and obviously each individual case is, mm. is very difficult to, to deal with, where... Uh, a sanction was a blunt instrument was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, what is important, I think, is that people who are in this position should approach their MPs, if, they, if they're submitted to a sanction, uh, they should approach their councillors for help and advice. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of and the in the is meantime, what do they live off? Because a sanction well, means that well, money, money is either stopped altogether or reduced. While they're appealing or writing a letter or waiting for a reply, what do they live off? Well, now, clearly, what, what should happen is they should seek advice straight away. What well, do well, they so live off? Well, the, the clear position is they should seek advice and help. That doesn't an MP, give them money. No, but an MP uh, can be in a position whereby they can help uh, and get advice and get this sanction overturned, provided... How quickly? They, they, well, it can be very quick indeed. But how quick? Well, it, it depends on the circumstances and what has, what has led to the position. Now, the fact weeks, of missing... Weeks, No, it can be a matter of weeks. 
or, a matter or, of or, or weeks, matter even days. So what should that person have I understand on? the circumstances. David have been dead. I understand the circumstances. And clearly, the medical conditions of a claimant mm. should be taken into account fully before any sanction should be applied. Uh, I, I mean, that's view, the other thing from the report today. Sorry to interrupt, That's Mr. the problem. Butler. It suggests that uh, some job centres are referring twice as many people for sanctions as others in the same area. And it's yeah. completely I mean, inconsistent according well, to this. It report. is completely inconsistent. That, that is a, a, a postcode lottery mm. that clearly is unacceptable and, and has to be addressed. Let me bring in Charlotte. Um, your daughter was 23 weeks pregnant when she was sanctioned. What was the impact on her? It was devastating and she's never got over it. She was um, ill at the time, but we didn't realise. She, you've got to remember that when you're sanctioning a pregnant lady or anybody, in the, you, she was feeding an unborn child, okay? So there wasn't only her life, there was a, a baby's life. And when she told this and she said to the advisor, look, you're not just sanctioning me, you're sanctioning my baby. They said, tough, get on with it. Now, those words were noted. She came out of the job centre crying, they had no sympathy whatsoever. Uh, she's never actually mentally recovered from that. And I don't think she ever will do. Um, Mr Blackman, we have claims today of a peer in the House of Lords clocking on while his taxi is waiting outside in order to claim his 300 quid daily allowance and doing no work. And yet we have stories here of people who are trying to s survive on not very much to start with, mm. GSA is 70 odd quid a week, having their money cut off if they miss a meeting. Mm. I mean, there's, there, I mean, there are double standards. Well, clearly that's un unacceptable, and I, w I would never defend that. No. I mean, I think one but of the things we see that there are double standards. Yeah, but here one of the issues society. here, well, there are double standards being applied. One of the issues that we're trying to deal with is a very complex set of welfare uh, positions, and reforming it so that people apply once, they they're properly assessed, and they get the benefits they're due. I mean, the fact is that people who are have medical conditions, as we're hearing here, should not have sanctions applied. The medical staff, who obviously they, they, they are assisted by, should be in a position to help and advise okay. those making these decisions. Do you agree um, with this recommendation from the Re Public Accounts Committee report today? There should be a trial of warnings rather than sanctions for the first sanctionable offence. Absolutely. So, I, so I completely gets agree a verbal with that. Warning. I think it's absolutely right. And then when they get a verbal warning, then it's that's the time when they can go to their doctor, they can go to get um, their, their MP's help, uh, counsellor's help. They can get the advice they need so they can make sure that the DWP staff are informed of the, the problems, and particularly medical problems, that people mm. face. I mean, Jill. I have every sympathy with people in this position, and we've got to make sure it's right, so that the people that really need the help, you know, such as your, your late brother, get the help that they need mm. uh, and are not sanctioned uh, uh, in a completely unacceptable way. Mm. This report, Jill, just to say as well, I mean, there are a lot of criticisms of the sanctions, yeah. the inconsistencies, the fact that they've yeah. increased in severity over the years. It also points out sanctions do encourage some people into work? Um, well, I've heard different, I've heard, di I've heard and seen different reports. Mm. Um, you know, making people destitute and um, in such a state, how can that be encouragement? I mean, they say sanctions are issued as a last resort. Missing two meetings, is that a last resort? Well, no, it isn't, and I think that's the clear point um, that I, I, I would be making. I just don't understand that. And plus as well, um, David didn't have an inquest when he died because he died of fatal diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, and um, so I've asked for an inquest into David's death. It's, mm. it's been refused because they say there's no causal link between the benefit sanction and David's death. I'm now crowdfunding with Crowd Justice, and I'm asked. It's now gone for judicial review. Mm. I'm just hoping that by doing this, that um, showing that um, you know what happened to David, um, you know the sanctions didn't help, mm. and I hope that this will help to get prevention of future deaths. Mm. That's I all I'm asking for. I have uh, another statement from the Department uh, of Work and Pensions. Our sanctions guidance is the same right across the UK. That's, you know, trying to address the inconsistency point. And the fact is the number of sanctions has more than halved in recent years 
Sanctions are an important part of our benefit system and are only used in a very small percentage of cases as a last resort when people don't fulfil their commitment to find work. Thank you, Jill. Thank Go you. on, quick final word. Um, there's been reports even from the, the Trussell Trust, you know, the, the food bank saying that, um, you know, their reports show that a lot of what's happening with the food banks was due to benefit problems. Mm. And, um, you know, it is still going on. People are still dying and people are still suffering. Mm. And it shouldn't be happening. We're, we're meant to be what, the fifth richest country in the world. And yet people are dying. I just, I just think it should stop. And you should just look at, you know, all I want is them for, to look at the, the guidance. You know, we've, we've now produced professional medical reports, you know, yeah. from diabetes specialists who looked at diabetes and they show concerns about the guidance and I we asked for an there was an independent review asked for in 2015 um, at a select committee inquiry and that was yeah. refused yeah. that was refused thank you for coming on the program we'll follow your progress your fight on behalf thank of your you so much. thank you thank you uh, thank you to Charlotte as well uh, and thank you to Bob Blackman as well. Go on, quick word, Charlotte. Can quick. I just say, come back at the Minister, that there is no evidence to prove that a sanction encourages people into work. In fact, it does the opposite okay. when well, you that, are sanctioned. That, you know. I quoted that from today's yeah, report, but I appreciate your point. Thank yeah. you. And uh, you're not a minister yet, I think. No. You're a Conservative MP, but, but thank you. But I am piloting my homelessness reduction bill, which will actually oh. dramatically improve the position for people that are homeless and have faced some of these problems. Now, they shouldn't get to that stage, no. but, but at least... You know, we are. I'm taking action to make sure the law is changed so that local authorities will provide the help and assistance that people in this vulnerable position need. Thank you, all of you. Thank you.